if we look at the beginning of the 20th century through the prism of the avant-garde age, we can see here that time was a real paradox because on the one hand we had the creativity that was unexpected and enormous, glorious, impossible for the previous century. I'm talking now about architecture, about fine arts of the beginning of the 20th century. I'm talking about the theatre of that time, because theatre had also innovations in structure of performances, in minimalistic decorations and many others. Hey, welcome to the episode number 11 of Culture Digger. My name is Sandy Reeves and I can't believe that our show has already 11 episodes and today we're talking about Vasily Kandinsky. I'm really happy to do this, so let's start right now. And let me repeat again that Culture Digger is the podcast about cultural phenomena, decade reviews, architecture and design, and too many other interesting stuff. And today this stuff is really interesting because we're talking about the pioneer of abstractionism, about person that was the source of inspiration for many artists, architects, designers, Many talented people from the beginning of the 20th century and they had an opportunity to be inspired by Vasily's experience while he was a lecturer, a teacher and the artist. Many of us have seen the paintings by Vasily Kandinsky but not many of us can understand why these lines and colors and some geometrical figures are pictured. So we should have few states about Vasily Kandinsky to be clear at the beginning of this episode. First, he was one of the most influential abstractionists of the avant-garde age. The second, teacher and lecturer of one of the greatest institutes of the 20th century named Bauhaus. Third, Vasily Kandinsky was owner of three citizenships. Can you imagine this? Russian, German, French, and if we decompose Russian citizenship into three more, he had five. He had the citizenship of the Russian Empire, of the RSFSR, and of the USSR. And I think the next fact gonna be amazing for that people that want to change their life to start some hobby, and they think that they are old enough for something, for music or for art, Vasily decided to become an artist being 30 years old and maybe more. And for the today's discussion of Vasily Kandinsky's arts and concepts and his lecturing practice in Bauhaus, I have to put some biography facts about him in this episode, so I'll turn on some kind music and tell you about his life a bit. In 1892, Vasily got his education in law and economics in Moscow, and after this moment, in 1896, he relocated to Munich and attended Anton Asbes private art school. In the year of 1900, he studied in the Art Academy in Munich and was one of Franz von Stuck's students. And you should understand that after this moment, after the year 1900, it took nine years, or nearly ten years, to compose his first abstract composition. So it was a really big way, the way of a true artist. In 1909 he co-founded the Neue Künstlervereinigung München, that was New Artists Association of Munich, and still 13 years bordered Vasily from the Bauhaus experience. 
In this period, he came back to Moscow, he was the vice president of GACHN here, that was formerly the Russian Academy of the Science of Arts. Also, he taught at the Russian famous state art and technical school called Phutemas. Phutemas, to your understanding, was such a phenomena of the avant-garde age as the Bauhaus school was. But still it was established in Moscow and that's the great topic for another episode. And why do I pay my attention to Bauhaus and Hutemas in such manner? I want to give you understanding that that was a big breathing, that was a freedom for creators of the 20th century. That was the opposite of culture and arts for that age. If you try to compare any regular academy, university, school of art and design of that time, you won't have any opportunity to take them in one line because Bauhaus was completely different, Hutemas was completely different too. Many of artists and designers and architects that created their works in genres of modernism, functionalism and constructivism, they have been studying in Bauhaus or were just inspired with ideas and concepts that were dominating here. The look of the city of the 20th century, the look of modern cities and the modern interior design, everything that you think is quite modern, has its roots in the beginning of the 20th century in works of amazing people that created something opposite to anything else at that time. Sometimes we can meet conservative point of view about the arts of the 20th century, about abstractionists, avant-gardists, constructivists and others. There are people that think that they didn't create some specific and difficult art, that it was too applied type of art, that it was not so difficult and classical. And you know what do these people after this declaration? They go to Ikea and buy some functional furniture. And you know who invented the functional furniture? Bauhaus, Hutemas, and all the people that were in their teams. Of course, there were avant-gardists in different countries, but I want to use examples of Bauhaus in Germany and Hutemas in Russia. Though the first artworks by Kandinsky were made in impressionism genre, he was a master of his minimalism, abstractionism, he could use geometrical forms and lines of different thickness with only a few colors on the painting and give you such a dynamic and power in his painting, so he was the right person for the Bauhaus Institute. And now you can think something like, okay, thick line, thin line, that's really great, and two colors. Why is he a genius? What was an innovation in his artworks? Why everyone says that Kandinsky is so and so, and you, Sandy, are common to all these others? saying something about Kandinsky. Just a moment, we are starting to deconstruct this. <laughs> Sorry, please, I went so deep in sound effects in this episode, I'm starting. And here is the quote by Vasily. A painter who finds no satisfaction in mere representation, however artistic, in his longing to express his inner life, cannot but envy the ease with which music, the most non-material of the arts today, achieves this end. He naturally seeks to apply the methods of music to his art. That was the quote from Vasily Kandinsky's book that was published in 1910 and was called Concerning the Spiritual in Art. Sharing the same direction with Emperor Sanis from the past, which wanted to give the pure emotions to their paintings, Kandinsky went even further. He tried to paint his emotions, his feelings, without any natural forms that Impressionists had in their paintings. 
Vasily was fond of music, he loved it so much, and he wanted to create something like music in the area of fine arts. So combining the colors, Vasily tried to put some chords to his picture. You know, even the categories that Vasily used for sorting out his artworks were close enough to categories of music, improvisations, compositions and impressions. And if compositions could be long prepared, improvisations could be some fast sketches with pure emotions ahead. Maybe you saw some ideas like this in modern art, but that was the basis of it. Vasily tried to give something that didn't exist before him, and his enormous assuredness of his way of thinking, of his concepts, made it possible. And nowadays modern artists just can compose any concept and prove it, and to get attention to their works, not being extremely criticized. Vasily was criticized in his times. Art press didn't get his ideas sometimes. Critics just didn't want to recognize some meaning of circles and lines in his works and could drop some not a kind comment. But still, Vasily was greatly and fully approved in Bauhaus. Here, in 1926, Vasily had published one of his most important books named Point and Line to Plane. Here, Vasily tries to describe in a scientific way the artistic composition and the way in which art, human and nature interact. I think I can recommend this book to everyone who wants to understand Vasily's artworks and way of thinking better. And also I can recommend one more book. It is called The Bauhaus Group and is written by Nicholas Fox Weber. Fine, let's move on to Vasily Kandinsky's paintings and to overview of dynamics in styles of his paintings during his life. Starting the recording of this episode, I wanted to comment every picture in details with my feelings about it, but I find fine arts to personal thing that I won't comment it to you, right? I want you to have clear mind and view about it without any extra comments from my side. So now I'm gonna describe the phases of the fine arts by Vasily Kandinsky and put some link into the description to culturetrip.com. There is a really good set of 10 beautiful pictures by Vasily and you have an ability to watch them through by yourself with your taste and opinion. And before we went deep into the paintings, I forgot to tell you about one more key to understand Kandinsky's view. Once he gave one strange test to his students in Bauhaus, in which he wanted to know about the associations that people feel with three figures, square, triangle and circle, and with three colors, blue, yellow and red. He asked to match these colors with these figures, and after the results of this test, Kandinsky confirmed following states, the circle is cosmic, absorbent, feminine and soft, and the square is active, masculine, and the triangle with its acute angles, intrinsically yellow. Of course, in modern days we can find these words pretty radical or strange, but... That was 20s, that was the 20th century, its beginning. This person tried to create his own philosophy, his scientific way. He was an intelligent artist with extremely subjective point of view and he had the pressure of many of people that were not agree with him. And what? I think that it matters and that's the context in which Vasily was a really breakthrough. 
He was a person that gave to other artists, to artists of nowadays, to designers and architects, that freedom that maybe that people needed and would not get without few heroes like Vasily. There was no psychology, there was no modern tolerancy and anything else. That was the 20th century, its beginning. And for that age, I think Vasily was a pretty brave person and he was a forerunner of something that existed later in the 20th century that we call often modern art, abstractionism, minimalism, anything else. Vasily maybe was bigger than all of this because he was one of the first people that tried to make it and made it. And now to paintings. I wanted just to give you phases of Vasily Kandinsky's fine arts or just artworks. Maybe Vasily wouldn't like fine arts because Bauhaus wanted to erase the border between fine arts and applied arts. Okay, Vasily's artworks. The first phase of his artwork <laughs> was made in genres of Impressionism and Post-Impressionism. A nice example of it is a painting. It has a name in German language, Der Blaue Reiter, and it was published in 1903. Also, you can see a picture named Murnau, Train and Castle, that was published in 1909, and it differs. The second phase, I would call it abstract and non-geometric, can be seen on a great and important picture for Vasily Kandinsky. Its name is The Rider. If you try to compare the Blaue Reiter and The Rider, you'll feel this complete difference between these two pictures. Vasily started to become an abstract artist. Though his works that were made in Dessau, in Bauhaus, are so geometrical, we can find watercolors made by Vasily, and one of them is Improvisation 27. It was released in 1912. I find this very beautiful. Composition 9, that was dated 1913, is a little bit geometric, but still not at that level that it was while Vasily had his practice in Bauhaus. You can also see the progress of artists with composition, the seventh, and points. Composition, the seventh, was released in 1913, and points were released in 1920. The main way in which these paintings are made, I think it's the same. It's a little bit nearly non-geometrical and abstract. And with his painting that is named On White the Second, that was released in 1923, we can see a real significant difference. And maybe you'll see here that Kandinsky that you used to see somewhere in some magazine, in some book, on some exhibition in the gallery. That's the Kandinsky from Bauhaus, from 20s. Just look through. Just look at this. That's, that looks amazing. I really love this picture and the year 1923 in aspect of art and architecture that was produced in those times. With the painting Several Circles, dated 1926, with this work we can notice that his arts become less and less geometric, he doesn't use any lines there, and the composition X, or the 10th, from 1939, right five years before his death, shows us the face of the great synthesis, no strict lines, 
and the combination of all the experience that Vasily had in his paintings. Maybe it's not so close to his impressionist experience, but still you should see it. Sorry, my throat is running out for today. Many thanks for every listener of Culture Digger podcast. I'm proud of you. Give me some comment about Kandinsky. Subscribe in Apple Podcasts, YouTube and Podbean as always. You can use RSS channel of my podcast and feel fine with it. Have a nice day. Have a nice weekend. Have a nice anything. I love to make this podcast for you especially. Bye.